Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing new discoveries in regards to planet Earth, or a potential resolution to one of the mysteries that's visible in one of the maps created by NASA. Although invisible in most of the maps we're used to, and most of the maps used at school. A map that you see right here. And this map shows us what's known as gravitational anomalies. Or in other words, slight deviations from the norm when it comes to the gravitational field on the surface of the planet. And so even though on average you expect the gravity to be the same no matter where you go on the planet, in reality depending on what happens underneath, the gravitational field does change by just a little bit. And back in 2002, NASA started a mission known as GRACE – Gravity Recovery and Climate Experiment. A mission involving twin satellites orbiting planet Earth that would measure minute deviations in gravity field in order to analyze and discover various water formations and water reservoirs on the planet but eventually extended to study other things as well, including crustal deformations and even massive formations underneath the crust. And this mission was conducted for over a decade, allowing NASA to create a very accurate map of planet Earth when it comes to gravitational field anomalies. And some of these unusual anomalies we've already discussed in previous videos, although the most famous ones were usually referred to as positive gravity anomalies, basically where the gravity is higher than it should be. Intriguingly, the biggest positive anomalies on the planet are associated with what's known as LLSVPs, Large Low Shear Velocity Provinces. You can find out more about them in some of the videos in the description, but in a nutshell it's these really huge chunks that today the scientists believe might actually be the remnants from the ancient collision that created the Moon and modern planet Earth. So basically these are remnants of Theia. But if you look at the map of the planet, you also find that there are not just positive anomalies, there are also negative anomalies. Here's I guess the more detailed version of this map, available directly from NASA, that shows you most of these anomalies in different color. And so the blue patches, especially the one that you see right here, are various regions on the planet that do exhibit slightly less gravity than the rest of the planet. And though some of them are quite obvious, like this is the Mariana Trench, the deepest trench on the planet. Here's what it looks like in contrast to the largest oceanic range known as the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. These are basically underwater mountains that you would not be able to see from the surface. Some of these anomalies even today are still unexplained. Now here we're not talking about Himalayas, although it is actually related to this. We're talking about that blue patch you see in the middle. This is the so-called gravity hole, an unusual gravitational anomaly in the Indian Ocean that for the longest time has actually been completely unexplained. And unexplained for one reason. In pretty much every case, the negative anomalies are either the result of ocean trenches or a lot of other depressions in the landmass. For example, like the ones you see right here in North America, they were most likely formed by ancient glaciers that were pressing on the surface and squished it just enough to reduce overall gravity. Or, in some cases, the presence of some kind of a low-density formation inside the mantle resulting from the interaction of the mantle itself. But all of these anomalies so far had some kind of an explanation, usually related to the detection of something underneath that spot, or a result of very thin crust, like the one you see right here in Africa, that was caused by the continents being stretched by the mantle underneath. And so technically you can summarize all of this as five potential explanations, either the thinning or thickening of crust, mantle, or sometimes both. But the actual changes here are very minute. They would not be perceivable to humans and they would actually not be detectable by anything other than very powerful instruments. Here the differences are basically as if the planet was maybe 100 or 200 meters higher or lower. Although here I guess a bit more explanation is probably necessary. These changes are measured in the unit known as GAL, named after Galileo. One GAL is equivalent to one centimeter per second squared. And technically the gravity on Earth is roughly around 976 gal, but it does change based on the altitude and based on the location. But here we're looking at changes in milligal, with the biggest change being 50 milligal, the smallest one being minus 50. And so that's basically just a decimal point that would be completely insignificant, but still observable and detectable with satellites, suggesting that something is definitely going on here. And it's this unusual formation in the Indian Ocean that's always been kind of confusing. Because here there are no ridges, this is actually all basically the same depth with a relatively similar structure of the ocean floor, and it also does not have any continents that are spreading apart, yet it's also the biggest such structure visible from outer space, or detectable by these satellites. And so this unusual gravity hole 
was always one of the biggest mysteries when it comes to gravitational anomalies. Here we're talking about an area of about 3 million square kilometers, with the center approximately 1200 kilometers southwest of the tip of India. And the only explanation that would make sense here is of course if something is happening inside the mantle underneath the spot. But what? And so to try to figure this out and to try to answer these questions, the scientists whose paper you can find in the description decided to rely on various computer simulations trying to recreate Earth in the last 200 to 300 million years and to then see what actually evolves over time as the planet undergoes various geologic changes and as various plates interact, creating new continents and destroying some in the process. And following 19 different scenarios, six of the simulations seem to produce something very similar. They resulted in a gravitational anomaly that seemed to be produced by a low density area surrounded by very large hot plumes. Or to rephrase this, it seems to be a result of some kind of an ancient ocean sinking underneath and producing the low density, low gravity anomaly. But also surrounded by relatively large plumes of molten rock that are now rising at the edges where this ocean used to exist. With the exact explanation being as follows. It all starts approximately 120 million years ago. This is following a breakup of a very large supercontinent known as Gondwana. At this point, chunks of the continent started to create various smaller continents, with Africa and India separating from the rest and now traveling a little bit to the north. Actually, one of the best ways to imagine this or to try to visualize this is by using the link in the description with the visualization created by Ian Webster. And so here, about 105 million years ago, the continents start to slowly separate and India that you see right here and Africa start to move in the northerly direction. But at this point, there's this really large sea, or I guess technically an ocean, that's known as Tethys. This ocean was located between supercontinents of Laurasia and Gondwana and existed for millions of years, much longer than most oceans on the planet today. But approximately 120 million years ago, things on the planet started to shift around. And so here's the planet approximately 90 million years ago, here's Earth when the dinosaurs perished, here's Earth 50 million years ago, and here's Earth 35 million years ago when India has now rammed into the Eurasian continent and has now begun forming Himalayas. And so as you can see, India advanced through this region really quickly. But as it did so, it sort of pushed on the ancient ocean, forcing it into the mantle underneath the crust. And at the same time, created a completely new ocean that we now refer to as Indian Ocean. Or in other words, it completely destroyed Tethys and instead formed a new region right here. And then within the next few million years, it moved a little bit to the north, with the planet now resembling this. And so the geologists behind this paper believe that these are remnants of the ancient Tethys seafloor, with the anomaly forming in the last 20 million years. With the anomaly taking shape in the last 20 million years, most likely because of the interaction between that ancient ocean and the hot plumes on its edges. With a study also suggesting that this is not something that's going to last for a very long time and will probably disappear within the next few million years. Although it's still not entirely clear if the simulated plumes from the study are really present underneath the Indian Ocean as implied. They haven't really been detected by any studies previously, but then again we do have certain plumes on the planet that really only make themselves known once major volcanic eruptions start. These types of plumes are responsible for the islands of Hawaii and also for massive eruptions in Iceland or in other locations normally in the middle of the continental plate. And so it could lead to some major volcanism in the next few millions of years if these plumes do make it to the surface. At least that's one of the implications from the paper. But the main finding is that, well, this anomaly is probably the remnant of an ancient ocean that existed for millions of years, making this the best explanation for this gravitational anomaly as of today. But if you'd like to learn about other anomalies we discussed previously, check out some of the videos in the description. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.